Hello, welcome to the Rare Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. And I would like to apologize for my voice. I'm currently coming down with a little bit of a cold, but I hope that my voice can recover as the days go by. Anyways, today, what I have for you is the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. Now, this tutorial could also apply to the current models, but I'm going to give you a basic rundown about how to set this all up. Now, what did the system come with? Well, I would like to thank the manufacturers for putting the system itself in this little baggie so that way it can be protected in shipping. And this is the screen protector they came with. And it also comes with this USB plug and that plug, which you can plug into the system for charging. Now, there are different color schemes you can order with this system and I picked the one that best represents the original Game Boy color scheme. And you can order the second option if you're having trouble spotting the buttons. But for me though, the buttons are perfectly clear. As you can see on camera here, you can see the buttons pretty well. But if you're having trouble spotting the buttons, then maybe colorful buttons might be the better option for you. Now, what supplies are you going to need to maybe make your experiences a little bit better with this system? Well, you're going to need a stylus, and I've gotten a dual purpose stylus from Walmart, and here's the packaging that it comes in. And I picked the color that matches the system the best, and this stylus can also serve as a pen, so if I need to write a note or if I need to write down what breeds I want, I can be able to do that. And if you want a more office-oriented setup, or if you have a gaming center, then I actually picked this up from Walmart's clearance center, and you can get the desk organizer set, and it comes with a big tray, a medium-sized tray, and a little tray and you can place all the gadgets in this area and you can designate this as the Retroid Pocket section. And if you are a frequent traveler, which I know some people that travel a lot, then you can be able to pick up a case. Now, the case that I have here is directly from my childhood and that would be the Game Boy Advance SP case that I've used for Wow, during the early 2000s, and I picked this thing up, and it's time to give this thing a new life, and it works pretty well with the things I can bring with it. And this is my childhood Game Boy Advance SP, black and white, but I'm not going to talk too much about my childhood, I just wanted to make that note there. But you can essentially bring a case, since the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus didn't come with a case, I decided to pick up my childhood case and it's nice to reuse this again after, wow, two decades. All right, so let's go ahead and set this thing up. Now, I did the initial setup. It's going to ask for your Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, and Pokemon is one of the apps you can pick as a default. Make sure to pick Pokemon. Now, when you turn this thing on, should be a little power button right there. You gotta hold that and there's gonna be a little vibration. Now this stylus is gonna help make your experience as much better. Oh yeah, I also got a SD card and this SD card comes with a little thing you can, oh yeah, there's a little Game Boy and animation. But going back to this, there is a little pocket that you can be able to pull out the mini SD card with. Why is this important? Oh yeah, in order to turn this thing on, you need to click on the A button right there. Oh yeah, and if you wanna quick power it, click on the power button and there you go. Now, this is the default screen right there. And let's go ahead and pop out that mini SD card. Now, this is important particularly for PokeML because you want to install the ROMs, you need to do that from your laptop. 
and there should be a little pocket here in this system. There you go. And all you have to do is just pop it open. And I like the fact that the system has a little plastic protector. Now, excuse me for one moment as I place this mini SD card in, so I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now make sure that your SD card is facing this direction when, when plugging it in. So make sure it's facing that direction and it should click in. So I'm gonna do that. It's hard to do this. There we go. Perfect. Now I installed the ROMs in that SD card and let's go ahead and add PokeMO to the app selection. Now I advise you to navigate this system with this particular stylus as it makes the experience that much easier. And there's Pokemon's logo right there. I didn't have to do anything. It's there on the system by default. I like that little calculator just in case maybe I'm trying to crunch some numbers and I don't have one readily available. All right, there we go. Now let's go ahead and pop up Pokemo. And you should get Pokemo's update screen. Now there's gonna be a special option you got to enable the unknown sources. Say yes. And allow from this source. Now, let's go back to PokeMO and let's see if we can do the update. Okay. All right, we are back here on PokeMO. Let's see if we can do the update once again. I wanted to show you that. There we go. As you can see, PokeMO is doing an update. All right, I am back, and before I did the cut, there was a pairing error, but all you have to do is just re-click on the app and it should allow it to update, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and click on open. And now we gotta select our ROMs. And this is why I plugged in the SD card right there. That's what that's used for. So let's go ahead and pop this up. All right, I'm here in the page and we're looking for a Pokemon Black ROM. So we don't need to click any of these options. These options are going to be quite confusing. Just scroll down here, assuming that you installed the ROMs in this SD card and it should be readily available right here. As you can see right there. Yes, so let's go ahead and install the black and white ROM there. And then we can be able to do the rest for all these ROMs as well. So I'm going to do that. All right. And for anybody writing that I forgot Pokemon Emerald. Well, I have it here now. So there we go. Let's go ahead and X out here. And the game must be restarted. All right. Now we have the full package. Everything here on Pokemon. And there should be a tab there that says, what language do you want? I picked English. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in. So I'm going to give you an in-game test and how to navigate this system. And then we're going to sign off. So I'll be right back. All right, I am logged in. Let's go ahead and go into the game real quick. All right, we are here. And this is what the system looks like. Now, I can use this or I can use this, that system. Now, this is my B button so I can run. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and set up these keys real quick. So I know someone had an issue with this before, so let's go ahead and do that. And in order to do that, you gotta click on this cog and gameplay control interface. Okay, so we got key A and key B. We got that by default. Now, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and get our hotkeys all registered. So let's go ahead and go down here to hotkey one. I'd like hotkey one to be this. Okay. Hotkey two. 
can be that. You don't need me to do this, just doing this quickly. And then you gotta click on that floppy disk right there. And you can set up these buttons as well, but I don't wanna do this on video because this video is taking long enough. So now you can just click your hot key button one. Let's go and go outside here. Now, let's go ahead and click on our X button. Now we have the bike there. Now, in case you don't like the feeling of doing this joystick, you can always make this your default. So let's go ahead and go to our settings again. All right, and that's, that's the option that we want. Now, let's go ahead and key up. Key down. Just like a regular Game Boy. Now, let's go and try this again. And this time we can have the original Game Boy feel to it. And let's just say you want to crunch some numbers for a breed that you want to do. So let's go ahead and go to the home button real quick. We can go to our calculator and then you can punch in whatever number you need to punch in. And then you can go back on PokeMO. And you can use that information to breed. Now, before we power off the device, it'd be good to log out of PokeMO. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, let's go ahead and click on that power button. I think I showed it earlier. There we go. And now let's go ahead and use that Game Boy Advance carry case from my childhood. In fact, what I have here are sticky notes, just in case I need to write something down while I'm traveling. I have, a, I have the charging cable right there, the headphone jack, which by the way, you can plug in right over here. There we go, right by the SD card. And then I have the pen there. So just in case you need to write something down, let's go ahead and put that in. All right, and as you can see here, it's kind of a snug fit there. All we have to do is just clip this on. All right, and I clip this and now it is ready for traveling. By the way, I forgot to mention that the sticky notes you can also get from Walmart too. And before I sign off, I am not sponsored by any companies that have been featured here. I just wanted to showcase some features of this Retron Pocket 2, as well as feature some additional accessories that might make your experiences a little easier with this device. So without further ado, let's go ahead and sign off. Anyways, this is Roger News Channel. Don't forget to comment, down, subscribe to our channel, like the content that you see here. And this is the Roger News Channel signing off. Fast and good, my Roger's News.